Hi everyone, Sandy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to be taking on the absolute massive T95 super heavy American tank. Uh, this tank was developed in uh, the late part of World War II. It was originally designed as the T28 and it had a 105 millimeter gun. But uh, they thought they might by chance want to put an even larger gun inside of it. So they came up with the T95 which had a 155 millimeter gun. So just a massive piece. It was originally designed to assault the Siegfried line in uh, World War II. But by the time the vehicle prototypes had been made, uh, American forces had already surpassed that and so it was deemed that it probably wasn't necessary and then they thought about using it in the uh, Japanese mainland fighting but uh, the atomic bombs took care of that as well so they basically were scrapped they only made two prototypes of the real vehicle so, uh, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of parts on this kit so I'm excited to get going on it so let's get started First thing I want to show you guys is the uh, the massive hull that comes with the kit. Uh, it's a bathtub style hull, so the the sides and part of the sponson are already in place on here. Also, want to show you this massive piece that Dragon's molded as one big piece. This is the uh, the top going onto it, and you can just see how big this thing is going to be. Uh, and also keep in mind too, so it's got two sets of tracks on either side too, so the vehicle is probably going to be about that wide plus all the addition on the back. So it's just, just going to be a very, very large vehicle. Also going to show you the, uh, the, the tracks that come in the kit. Now the kit, kit comes with the rubber band type tracks. In fact, it comes with quite a few rubber band tracks. Um, these are all of them right there because it has so many, uh, it's so big and has so many track links. We glued these two together right here, but the big thing that's going to take a little bit of time for this kit is each one of these little individual guide horns has to be glued into place. And that means there's about 400 of them total. Um, and this is the Dragon Styrene, so it takes regular modeling glue just fine, and also it'll work to, you know, to glue the two halves together. But you do have to cut out all those pieces and then glue them into place individually. So. Uh, quite a bit of work, but uh, I think it's going to look really nice once we get done. I'm going to show you the uh, the process of assembling one of the, uh, the the bogies on this kit. Now there are a total of 16 of these that have to be built, and they actually do have a real working spring in actually two working springs in each one of them that will make the actual pieces pivot. Now it's not very much, but it is it is noticeable and it is kind of cool the way they have done this. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of show you the basics of the, the piece going together, just the one, and then I'll come back after I've got all of them built and we'll show you how they go onto the side of the vehicle. So here you see the uh, completed set of bogies. Now this set right here is going to get pushed off to the side because it's not attached to the hull, it's attached to the outer sponson. The, uh, the first thing that we need to take care of though is attaching the back uh, part of the hull. And um, it fit fairly well on it. There was a little bit of a gap 
Uh, now it is going to get covered up, but I just thought it was a little weird that it had a gap, and it may have just been that the piece was slightly warped because it was so large coming out. And, and it's very, very minor because, like I said, it's getting covered up by some side pieces. So just want to use a little extra glue in this area and make sure it's attached very, very well. And what I did was I went back and sanded over all of these parts to kind of fill up the seam that was going to go on it. As you can see right in here, this is dried now, but we're going to sand all right in through here. Uh, just just so this next part fits really well now in the front It's kind of another unusual design and this is based because of the tank There are some big plates you have to put in the front and the back side and That is going to be the part that holds your uh, your idler wheel in the front because this has the drive sprocket in the back And then once you get all of that putting a little glue that's after we've sanded it now And we're just going to use this plug. And you can see it covers up quite well the little bit of uh, unevenness, but just a little minor thing. And then after that, there's really no set assembly. I just found it easier to work from the top down. Now, we've got it flipped over, of course. And getting the, the little uh, return rollers done on top. And they're very specific for that, too. So you have to keep in mind when you're building all these little pieces that you make yourself a little uh, little cheat sheet map and you know mark out little boxes with the numbers on it so you can put them in place and not misplace them later because they are a few of them are quite different from each other final piece that goes inside the suspension system definitely requires you to have a uh, good pair of tweezers because with the photo etch in place it's very very hard to manipulate with just your fingers so if you get a pair of tweezers you can kind of work it into place because each one of those little photo etch bars has to meet inside the opposite wheel now the outer boat or the outer uh, sponsons go together almost identically as the uh, this, the hull uh, just just some outer pieces here. You're going to just glue all the same parts into the same position just like you did on the outer one. So here we are, here is our uh, completed lower suspension, both sides as you can see, and then also the, uh, the lower suspension for the outer bogies. So as you can see, between the tracks and all the bogies, that is a, probably about 70% of this build. Uh, and it's, so this is actually a very easy kit to put together, just a lot of uh, repetitive motion, so, but it looks really, really beautiful. And what we can, I've also started doing is I've also started making up the little photo etch boxes for the sides and then just cutting out all the other little parts that will go on the upper hull that we'll start putting that together. So what I'll start doing now is we'll start gluing the parts on the upper hull and working on getting that all fitted together with the top, with the bottom. 
as we start to build the uh, the periscopes and the vision blocks for this kit, uh, it's a little unusual. The the new kit comes with the T95 comes with just plastic vision blocks and periscopes. When the original T28 kit came out, it had clear parts like this sprue right here. And in fact, we had some extra of these left over, so we're going to use these clear vision blocks and the periscopes in the uh, the turret hatches, just because it looks a little bit better. It's just un unusual that Dragon went back and changed it to a uh, plastic, but you'll be able to paint these up. You probably have to just paint them beforehand. And same thing with the glass. We will paint all this up and put the uh, the vision blocks in separately later. Next, what I'm going to show you is the uh, the barrel assemblies. Now, the kit is a two-in-one kit in the sense that it comes with both barrels to either do the 155 millimeter or the 105 millimeter. Now, the 105 millimeter that's included with the kit is an aluminum barrel with a uh, plastic muzzle brake. Uh, one quick point: if you're going to use this one right here, the instructions aren't very clear on this. But if you try to glue the the muzzle brake on, which I did right here it will not fit into this. It's got to come from the back and then you glue the muzzle brake on. But this is easily could just snapped right off. But uh, I am not going to be using this barrel anyway. We're going to be using the 155. Now the 155 is a two-part barrel and as you can see here I've started to uh, get rid of the seam down the middle and that's where the the soft foam sanding blocks really work well for getting that won't leave a flat spot. So we have a little bit more work to do on that and the barrel goes together pretty Pretty easily slide this in you got to keep in mind the uh, the vision port and also keeping the the muzzle brakes flat to it too because there's no no uh, little guide slot or anything to keep it straight so keep that in mind as you're putting it together and then it's pretty pretty simple you want to not apply glue onto those so the barrel will still spin these are just been snapped into place for right now and then we'll snap that in there and then finally you'll put this and you'll glue this piece in and that'll lock the whole thing together and then the barrel will be able to go up and down. It doesn't go up and down a lot, but uh, but it's enough to, for a nice detail. And if you do decide, now this is from the other T28 kit from an, an older build. Uh, this is what the, uh, the barrel will look like on that one. So they do give you the option in it, so it's up to you to choose either do the T28 or the T95 tank. Okay, we're going to start the... Uh assembly on the upper hull. Uh, just a couple quick things. Now, like I've told you, I'm going to use the, uh, the clear vision blocks in this kit. So I'm just placing those into position for right now. And then we'll come back later on and we'll glue them in place later. And the upper hull has a, after that gets glued on, has a big big machine gun ring with a 50 on top plus let's pop these into place these big engine hatches they're just massive pieces I'm gonna glue all those as well too so and then the other piece we'll leave off temporarily too is the last little periscope piece here that'll get glued into place right there so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these top pieces and I'll come back and show you what it looks like now before we go any further I'm going to attach the uh, the upper and lower hull and this is just a minor thing and most of you will notice it right away if you just drop the uh, the upper part on it, it feels like it's starting to fit pretty well but you really want to give it a little extra push because you see there's some weld seams right here that need to go on the outer side of it and it takes a little finagling to get it to fit like that but uh, once you do it'll really really fit really nice and firm okay the uh, the next step requires a little bit of planning and I just wanted to to check to make sure that we could slide the tracks in from the uh, the back or the front and they do slide pretty easily so we won't have a problem with that and what I talk about by planning is is I've heard from a few other people reading up that there's sometimes when you're gluing these outer sponsons on that you have a, you end up with a kind of a large gap sometimes so what I thought I would do is I would start working on these and I, I attached one clamp that's going to hold the top the both sides together but the more I thought about it I think I'm not going to put those on until actually after I 
secure the entire side of the sponson. And this way it won't have anything in the way stopping it. We'll get a nice seam all the way down the line and then we can glue the both sides of those on afterward and still be able to slide the track down the back and attach it from the bottom because it has, it's a not a full band yet so we can just attach that on the bottom and we should have no problems with it so i'm going to work on this for a little while uh see how straight of a line we can get with it this side seems to fit pretty good there is a little bit of a gap on the other side when i was dry fitting it but i think if we uh if we mess around with it a little bit and not put those on we should get a nice uh, straight line for it so here we go uh, i've got both sides on and pretty happy compared to some of the pictures I've seen online from other people uh, we only have just a slight little seam right here now there now technically there is supposed to be a seam because they are a piece that gets mated on and then you know taken off from time to time so a little seam like that once we paint it I don't think will be very bothersome at all and the same with this right here this is I think this is pretty minor because it's supposed to like I said be clamped together so it's not going to always be perfect now as we do that I also want to point out to you too uh, when you're attaching the barrel, you might want to attach this round ring first and then get your barrel in place because there is a definite way to put it on. I started to glue this piece in here earlier and luckily test fitted it first and I realized I had it this portion on upside down because you need to have this little vision port on the uh, if you're if you're looking at the vehicle on the left side of the barrel. So this would just get glued into here and we'd still have, you know, I haven't put glue on it yet, but this way this will still move up and down. So just keep that in mind as you're going forward on it. Oh, and one other quick thing too, I thought I'd pull this out, kind of show you a side by side. This is the uh, the Stewart tank that we did a while earlier. But as you can see, this is a much, much larger vehicle. So I'm kind of finishing up right here the final little groups of parts that need to go into place. And as we attach these things, it also has these two little cranes. Now what these were for is these were mounted on certain parts of the vehicle and they could mount it just like this and this. And that's what was used to mate up this side sponson to the, the main hull because this these two side sponsons could come off and could be towed from behind if it was going through a narrow tunnel or you know a small area that it couldn't fit with this full thing so we have the option of kind of putting them anywhere we want i probably will just put them on one side as if it was ready or maybe even just like this not really sure yet it kind of looks cool that way at least it's symmetrical as we look at it so now i've also left off all of the tools because we're going to paint those separately at the at, near the end and then we'll glue those on once the entire kit is painted so uh, and then like I was telling you earlier too, these are all going to remain off now. So pretty much we're done with the general construction and as you can see, it's just a, a massive, massive beast of a tank. Uh, very, very cool. I did have to do a little bit of filling with a little putty up in the front areas right in here where the body two meet together. Uh, and I probably have to do just a tiny bit touch more down there as well. But overall, the, the fit is pretty good. Uh, uh, very easy kit to put together. There is a lot of parts. So like I was telling you, it's an easy kit, but it's a lot of repetition. And in fact, if we flip this over, you can see the number of road wheels that this kit would have. It's quite impressive. So uh, nothing that anyone couldn't handle. It's just gonna, like I said, just take some time. And then of course, the same thing with the tracks. 
uh, quite a bit of work on those as well. So, but overall, very, very simple put together, just as long as you can follow the instructions. In fact, the instructions are a grand total of three pages folded out. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit more finish sanding, touching up, doing all that kind of stuff, getting these last little parts on. Then we're going to come back and paint it. Okay, we've got the whole vehicle all sanded and uh, kind of cleaned up. I threw the tracks on here for right now, but we're just because we're going to paint them the, the NATO black. We'll actually put them to the side, I should say. And uh, now this is going to use a lot of paint, probably at least twice as much as what a normal tank would do. So right now we're going to paint the entire thing with NATO black. Also, while we have the uh, the blackout, we'll go ahead and paint up the uh, the base coat for the uh, the tracks as well. So the uh, the black paint is dried, and we've checked now for any flaws that we might have, including like the uh, the seam down the middle of the barrel. Uh, I can't see any split once the black was put on, so I think we'll go ahead and keep it like that. Did a little bit of repair on a few other things that looked like the little rough spots that we went and sanded and just repainted black again. And now that the uh, the final uh, black coat looks really good and we like the way the model looks, we can go ahead and do the uh, the second, the highlight coat or white over all the highlight panels. Okay, now that we have the uh, highlight and the uh, the shadow coat on, we're going to paint the vehicle with XF62 Olive Drab from Tamiya. And we're not going to lighten it at all, we're going to use just based on the way it is right now. And from what I was reading, uh, late war American tanks were very, very dark Olive Drab. And from what everyone was saying on there, that the Tamiya is the most accurate of late war Olive Drab. So we're going to use that as our base coat over the entire vehicle. Now you might notice that I'm not putting on a super heavy coat. Uh, we're doing some light coat mist coats and kind of building it up so we don't lose all of the work that we did with the, uh, the black shadow coat and the light highlight coat. So we're just going to keep building it up gradually till we get to a point that we like that you have some tonal variations between the panels. So here we go, here is the uh, the final effect that I was going for, and w this is probably about three or four light mist coats. Now I didn't let it dry in between mist coats at all, it was completely like starting on one side, working to the other, starting over again, just lightly letting the paint build up, and you can see we got a nice tonal variation, uh, you know, that it looks like faded in some areas, and, but it's got some shadow, it just doesn't look so monotone. Now I still plan on doing the, uh, the camouflage on it, like on the box art, but I probably am not gonna dirty this up very much. This, this was, now this gun never existed on this vehicle, so I know that it's fictional in that respect, but they did make two T28s, the regular T28s, with the, uh, the 105 millimeter gun, and we're gonna just do it basically the way the box art is, with the uh, that kind of three four tone camouflage on it, kind of just because that's the way the box art looks. It looks cool, and I think I'm gonna do it that way. Whether it's real or not, it really doesn't matter because it's what you want to do with your model is the most important part, and I want to do that camouflage. I think it's gonna look really cool on this beast of a tank. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start doing the camouflage. Okay, now that uh, we like the way the olive drab has come out, we're going to do the camouflage on this. And based on strictly on the box art, 
since they actually didn't camouflage it. Uh, what I'm going to use is this this color that's fairly new from to me. It's linoleum deck brown, and it just appears to be kind of a bright brown. And I'm liking the way it looks on the camouflage on the box art, and it's very similar to that. And then we're going to use buff to kind of outline the camouflage, just like the box art. And then using a little bit of NATO black, we'll do some little areas like that to do the four tone camouflage. So uh, I won't talk anymore. You'll just show the next three steps of doing the camouflage. So here is the uh, completed paint job. I'm gonna give you just a little 360 of the whole vehicle. Uh, I like the uh, the color contrast between those four different colors. It really makes the uh, the thing pop quite a bit. Now, after I was done with the camouflage, we sprayed the entire model with TS80 Flat Clear from Tamiya. And what that did is that sealed in the uh, the paint job for us. So now, when we go ahead and use some of our panel liner, and we're just going to do some light weathering on this kit. But once we put all that stuff on there, it'll look really good, and it, this won't eat into any of the paint because it's all sealed in right now. Okay, I'm going to start just show you really fast uh, the decals going on. Now, the decals on this kit are very, very tiny, but uh, I guess they needed to have some kind of identification marks on the side. And what I put down was I put a little bit of Mark Fit Strong. Get the bottle over here and show you from Tamiya. And after we put the uh, Mark Fit Strong underneath and put the decal down, I'm going to put just a touch on top, making sure it's super straight. And then you can just use a cotton swab, kind of blot away any of the excess so it doesn't roll down the, uh, the side of the vehicle. And we're going to let that sit there for a few minutes and then come back and hit it with that same cotton swab and burnish it into the, uh, the textured material. Now I also went ahead and started putting the tracks on as well just put those on a few minutes ago uh, a quick little builders tip as you put them on put them on feed them through through the back and it's much much easier than trying to feed them through the front I spent uh, a bunch of time it keeps wanting to grab on something inside there boys you feed it through the back no problems at all now there's not a lot of decals in this just a couple of little tiny ones so I'm gonna go ahead and finish those up put them on and what we'll do is uh, spray the entire thing with the TS 80 again and seal in the entire vehicle that way the decals won't pop off later so here we are here is our uh, completed model as you can see I've gone ahead and put the uh, the tools in place I've also, I had just enough glass uh, for the command, for this cupola right here, and I put that in, and I'm trying to get a few more, because I haven't glued this uh, commander's hatch up yet, so we'll pop that out, and when I finally actually get the other pieces, uh, you, when I do get it, I'll pop those in and change them out. I just thought the solid ones just didn't look as good as the clear, you know, the shininess of the glass. And I was telling you, they're very sparse on the, uh, on the decals. And then for weathering, I just did some basic weathering, did a little streaking, and of course we covered the and used the uh, panel liner on all the little dot, all the little bolts and stuff to make them pop out a little bit more. And then did a little weathering in all the recesses down there. Uh, and then of course sprayed the entire model with uh, XF57 buff to you know kind of mix and meld all the colors together. So overall, the kit is a is a pretty simple kit to put together. There was no difficulty putting uh, any of the parts. Just a lot of repetitive action, you know, between the tracks with the Denver parts that are in, and then of course all the uh, the bogies underneath there. But nothing difficult. It's just that you got to make 16 of them. So this kit would be actually pretty pretty straightforward for any type of modeler, even for a beginning model. It's going to take you a little bit of time, no doubt about it. But uh, uh, I think you'll come up with a nice results. And I'm kind of liking this crazy camouflage job that we put on it. 
matching the box. Looks kind of cool and a little different. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and uh, please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.